Okay, let's study the sandwich theorem and uh, use this theorem to, de to derive our famous limit. And what is sandwich theorem? Suppose that first uh, fx is greater or equal to gx and less than uh, less than hx near x equals a or in a neighborhood. Oh, a. The second uh, condition is the limit x tends to a gx equals the limit x tends to a hx equals l. Then the, um, the conclusion is the limit x tends to a fx equals l. It's easier to understand. This is y equals fx uh, and gx. Uh, this is hx. And this is gx. Uh, yeah, gx. And the fx likes this. Where this is a in a small neighborhood near a or a the neighborhood of a. The fx is between hx and gx. Then we and uh, hx and uh, hx and gx has the same limit at x equals a. Like this, just like a. Uh, uh, sandwich. So we call this sandwich theorem. Uh, we uh, I don't want to prove it, prove this theorem. Uh, we will prove this theorem after we uh, after we study the former the former condition uh, former definition of limit. Let's use the sandwich sim to find some limit. Find some limits. The first one is when x tends to zero, find this limit is x times sine uh, sine one over x. The solution is use sandwich sim because when x is greater than zero. Uh, x times sine 1 over x is less than less or equal to x greater or equal to negative x because sine 1 over x is less than 1 greater than negative 1 and uh, when x is less than 0 x, x sine 1 over x is less or equal to negative x greater or equal to x But when x tends to zero, x the limit of x and the limit of negative x both equal zero. So the limit of x tends to zero, x times sine one over x is zero. The second, oh, okay. Uh, from for, from this example, we we got the conclusion that if limit x tends to a f x equals zero and uh, g x is a bounded function, then the limit 
x tends to a f x times g x equals zero. A bounded function a bounded function multiplied by a infin infinitesimal infinitesimal function. The result the result limit is zero. Actually, this theorem can be proved by the sandwich, sandwich theorem, just like this example, because fx times gx, the absolute value is less than m times the absolute value of fx. Then take, then take the uh, greater or equal to zero, and take the limit. The right hand side tends to zero, so f x times g x, the absolute value is tends to zero. So after we get uh, get rid of of the absolute value, it also tends to zero. And uh, we use a sandwich theorem to find another find another limit. Find the limit when n tends to infinity. One over square root square root n square plus one plus one over square root n square plus two to the n square square root n square plus n. When you sandwich theorem, we uh, modify the function a little bit to make it a little larger, or to modify this uh, function to be a little uh, a little smaller. And this two has this two uh, after we modify this, for modify this function, the two the two function should tend to the same uh, should tend to the same limit. Then we can use the sandwich theorem. Now this function. If we uh, change the denominator all to be square root n square plus one, then the expression is uh, is larger, so it's less than uh, one over square root n square plus one. There's n terms, and uh, if we use the uh, change the all denominator to be a, to be the square root n square plus n, then the the whole expression is a little smaller as n term. But when n tends to infinity, n over square root n square plus n that equals one. Why? We divide both nominator and denominator by n, and then into the uh, square root. The n equals square root n square. So that is one. n tends to infinity. n over square root n square plus one. That is n tends to infinity. One over square root 1 plus 1 over n square. That's that's 1. That's the method to evaluate evaluate limit use, using sandwich theorem. Now, we use sandwich theorem to, de to derive a famous limit. We 
right, uh, we uh, re uh, state it as a zero theorem. When x tends to zero, sine over x over uh, sine x over x tends to one. We prove this theorem using the unit unit circle. Use the unit circle. We draw a, uh, a ray start from the origin and intersect the unit circle at point A and then we pro uh, project this point to to the horizontal axis the projection is called b and the unit circle intersection with the horizontal axis at c then we uh, draw a perpendicular line with the with the horizontal axis uh, passing through C and uh, intersect with this ray at D. Now we conclude the area of the area uh, the area of the triangle OAB and the sector OAC and the triangle OCD. This the area of triangle OAB that is one half times the length OB times the length OA. Because all OA uh, and uh, no, no, not a OA. Uh, OA times sine x. This is x. Uh, first, we suppose x greater than zero. The h. This is the h. This is the base. So one half. OB is actually cosine x because it's the adjacent of this triangle. Uh, added on the adjacent side of x cosine x the OA is 1 so times 1 then times sine x and the area of sector OAC that is a 1 half x uh, the, second, the area of uh, our sector is that is one half times r squared times theta times the angle. But the r here, the, because this is a unit vector, so OA, the radius is just a 1. And the area of the triangle OCD. That is a one half OC times CD. The OC, the OC is one, and CD is tangent x because tangent x is the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite is DC, And all the adjacent is OC, OC is 1, so that is the, the area of uh, triangle OCD is 1 half ten to the x. And by the, by the graph, we know that the area of sector is less than the area, less, less than the area outside, the out, uh, of the, out, the outer triangle, that is 1 half tangent x and bigger than the in and the triangle in uh, inside inside the circle so that is one half cosine x times sine x 
and then we times both sides by both sides by one half. So that x is less than tan x greater than cosine x sine x, and divide both sides by sine x. And we reverse the fraction. Reverse the fraction, that is uh, sine x over x is less than 1 over cosine x greater than cosine x. That, but, but, but we know that when x tends to 0, cosine x equals 1, and uh, limit x tends to 0, 1 over cosine x is 1. So limit when x tends to 0. Now x be, because we in the condition that x is x is greater than 0. So that means x tends to to the 0 from the right. Sin x over x that is 1 by sandwich zero. And when x is less than 0, the limit x tends to 0 from the left. That is sine x over x. We change to the x to, to, be, to be sine to be positive, sine negative x and negative x. That does not change because sine negative x is negative sine x. So uh, uh, multiple both multiple multiply both sides by negative one. We got sine x equals negative sine negative x and x is negative negative x. So x tends to 0 from the left, that is sine negative x over negative x. Now negative x is positive. We can use a change of variable u equals negative x and this limit tends to u uh, uh, the limit uh, becomes u uh, tends to the zero from the right sine u over u by the previous result that is one so we got the conclusion that is when x tends to zero sine x over x that is one because the left hand limit and the right hand limit are same, are the same. This is a famous limit, and we can use this limit to evaluate some other limit uh, which uh, involve a trigonometric function. Limit x tends to zero sine 3x over 2x that's sine 3x so it should be divided by 3x then this tends to 0 and uh, if we divide, it, divide by 3x we should mo uh, multiply by 3x then there's 2x left so this part tends to 0, so the result is 3 over 2. We, all, we, we always change to sign something over the same thing, that is, we all, this part tends to 0, that's sign something over something 
these two parts are the same, then the limit will always be 1 because we can you use the change of, change of variable. When x, x tends to 0, tangent 5x over sine 3x Tangent x is sine x over cosine x. One over cosine five x. Uh, sine five x over three x. That that is ex exactly five over three. But we can deduce the details is like this. Sine five x should be over five x. And uh, there's sine three x. There should be three x. And should times they divide this part divided by five x. So we multiply by five x. This multiply three x. So we should divide by three x to cancel it. When x tends to zero, this part is one. So this part is 1, and this part is 1 as well. So this part is 5 over 3. This part is 1, so the result is 5 over 3. The third one is x tends to 0. 1 minus cosine x and over 3x square. For any other function, uh, any other trigonometric function, we we change them to be sine. 1 minus cosine x that is 2 sine x over 2 square. That's 3x square because cosine 2x equals cosine x squared minus sine x squared equals 1 minus 2 sine x squared equals 2 cosine x squared minus 1. And from this, from this relation, we have sine x squared equals 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. So 1 minus cosine 2x is 2 sine x squared. And cosine x squared, that is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. Um, this, this formula will be used in the in the uh, Integral will be used in the in integral very often. Ah, in the integral very often. Now, from from this uh, this formula, we got here, got here. X tends to zero. That's here sine square x over 2 so there should be x over 2 and square and there's 2 over 3 here this part that means the uh, divide the denominator by 4 so we should times the denominator by 4 to uh, to uh, Keeps 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 each two expression is two expression equal. Okay, then it becomes sine x over two over x over two square times one over six. Now this part tends to one, so the re the 
the result is one six. And for other for other uh, trigonometric function, we always need to change to sine x. And the last one, we evaluate this limit. n tends to infinite. 2 of n sine x over 2 of n. Uh, now the variable is n, so x uh, can, re and can be regarded as constant. First, we change this form to, to be sine x over 2 of n. That's 2 over n, uh, 1 over 2 over n. Because n tends to infinity, so x over 2 over n that tends to zero but but here the form is not the same so we change the form in the denominator should be x over 2n the, mm, that means the denominator multiplied by x so there's a, x uh, should be multiplied uh, in the lominator. And now sorry. Okay. Uh, now this part is tends to one because this part equals this part tends to one. So the result is x. We regard x as a constant here. That's the applications of this famous limit.